So one of the questions that I run into a lot are, should I go with Apache or Nginx? Well, it turns out if you're developing in PHP and you're using PHP and relying on it very heavily, it actually doesn't matter um, in terms of performance or, or memory efficiency whether you choose Apache or Nginx. It turns out that they can both f be fairly efficient on memory if you tune them just the right way. Uh, in Nginx, most people will use PHP FPM, which is a separate fork process manager that allows you to have a parent PHP process that forks off multiple children and talk to Nginx over fast CGI um, to be able to service your PHP request. Because Nginx doesn't actually have a plugin module like Apache where you can load PHP directly into the web server and the web server could just basically handle all the PHP requests directly itself without having to go over fast CGI. It turns out that you can still do the fast CGI route with Apache just fine and be very memory efficient where not every single web request that comes in to say a static JavaScript, CSS, or image or HTML file has to, ne has to necessarily be you know, handled by a process that occupies the PHP binary. Which is fine if you're forking a lot of children, but it turns out most people don't fork a lot of children. Most people don't service a lot of requests, they tend to scale wide or use multiple servers to handle their problems, and all of that works out just great as long as you take that into consideration, you know, making those tweaks about, you know, uh, your rate limits, your requests, uh, how many children you want to fork off, and uh, all the stability factors that you take into consideration. Nginx does have a huge benefit in terms of serving up a lot of static content very quickly, so if you're running something like a CDN, uh, where you're definitely distributing a, a huge amount of static content across multiple nodes, that tends to work out a lot to your benefit. So taking that into consideration definitely helps you make a better decision. The technology choices that we have available to us today have definitely expanded over the years. We have a lot more choices that we can make today than we used to, and that definitely makes it um, increasingly difficult to make a decision, to, to make a good decision about which technology you want to go with. If you're making a decision between things like Memcached or Redis for which caching solution is going to work out best for you, Memcached does not have a lot of great failover options if you're using a distributed cluster or a distributed pool of Memcached servers. Um, failover is definitely a problem. If you, have a, you know, if you have PHP code that has to talk to multiple Memcached servers, say for session storage where you need to distribute the session storage over multiple nodes for load balancing purposes, for example, you're going to run into a lot of problems if one of those Memcached servers happen to go down, the connection needs to be reestablished in order for it to figure out which hashing algorithm it can use to talk to uh, you know, the next server in the pool. Um, Redis solves some of the failover problems that Memcached may not address directly, but there are also the considerations of, you know, Redis may hit disk a lot and that could be a problem for you depending on your performance requirements. Uh, but then again, some people have a different concept of session storage where they don't expect their sessions to necessarily get wiped out if the server goes down. Um, having a persistent cache store can be a requirement for some use cases. Not all. In most cases, I find that people do just fine with Memcached, MySQL, and uh, Apache working with ModPHP. And that's, you know, your typical weekend warrior running a small blog or small personal website for a little project that they have going on the side, you know, very small uh, amount of traffic. That's usually not a problem. But these things can definitely be tweaked. Uh, you can definitely figure out good ways to scale them. There is no all encompassing answer of which technology solution works out best for everybody. There's no one size fits all, you know, in the game of IT. So just keep that in mind, and usually you do fine. Um, whether you're going to use MySQL or PostgreSQL for your database management system, take into consideration that something like MySQL, um, especially with the newer versions with MySQL 5.5 coming out and and so on and so forth, you can actually get excellent performance and excellent data replication. Um, scenarios set up where, you, where you've tweaked MySQL well enough to, to perform at you know very large scales with very large databases and, and do a lot of data replication and distribution over multiple clusters. That hasn't become so much as a, a problem as it used to be, but there are still situations where MySQL fails you implementations of its SQL flavor and things like that that you might do better off. Um, take into consideration which you're more comfortable working with, and if you're working with a team of developers uh, is your team going to be comfortable working with you know this solution over this solution? For example, I've worked on a lot of projects myself in the past where I've dealt with MySQL, so I feel very comfortable working and dealing with MySQL. I know a lot of its problems, I know a lot of its drawbacks, 
Um, I've dealt with solving a lot of problems, different kinds of problems in MySQL. Um, equally, I have tried other database management systems and I, I, I realized that um, it doesn't take a great deal of effort to learn something new, uh, but it does take a great deal of effort to get very comfortable with um, a specific technology and get used to it and be able to use it a lot. When you're choosing um, whether, you know, what flavor of Linux you're going to go with or what flavor operating system you want to you choose for your server, um, that again comes down to a technology choice of, you know, which one are you most comfortable with working because most of them pretty much all do the same thing. Despite the, the small trade-offs here or there, you really want to be more comfortable with the software and technology choices that you deal with on a daily basis, especially if you're going to have to deal with it, you know, over the course of the long haul, you know, several years or several months. You want to make that uh, a factor in your decision, ultimately, and not just base your decision solely on performance, because most people who are actually trying to solve performance issues or asking questions about how to solve performance issues usually don't have a lot of performance issues. Um, usually they haven't tested enough or they haven't looked closely enough or deeply enough into the problem to figure out how the performance issue can be solved without having to look to an, to an alternative technology. And that's ultimately what it comes down to.